So yesterday I put out a video documenting my quest for enlightenment. And with this video, I want to give you the science behind the spiritual journey that we're all having. The astronomy behind this dimensional shift and the events of 2012. Um, this is an audio clip actually from a board meeting for our nonprofit Enlightened Individuals. Some things that we were discussing with our board members. And um, I figured it would be good to express this with everyone because I think it's um, good to know the science and the astronomy behind what's actually going on, uh, not just the spiritual aspect behind it. So here it is. I, we all have been talking about this shift that's happening. We all have been talking about the ascension process. So. What I just wanted to do is present a scientific outlook on how and why this is all happening. Um, I think that the knowledge behind understanding uh, the process will help bring some ease and comfort in um, what we're going through right now. So I'm just gonna start off with like a brief lesson of astronomy and just to gain a foundational understanding of the shift that humanity is pretty much going through. Um, you've probably heard of the phrase, like I said before, what happens on the macrocosm level also happens on the microcosmic level. So that's where I'm going to start. Astronomy um, is the study of natural laws governing the universe on the grandest scales. It's the evolution of galaxies and stars and planets so, so, and so forth. Um, the evolution of these astronomical systems unfold in an orderly and predictable sequence. They're governed by these precise laws. And even across vast cosmological distances of billions of light, light years, astronomers observe the functioning of the very same laws of nature that govern here, are governed here on Earth. So, you know, these laws are, of nature appear to be truly universal. Now, in this photo, um, that we're looking at. This is called the Hertzsprung Russell diagram. It's something that I learned in my physics uh, class. And this shows the analysis of the life cycle of stars. So the stars that we see in the night sky um, are of many different varieties and ages. They display a variety of colors depending on the surface temperatures. Hot stars with the surface temperature of 25,000 Kelvin appear to be blue and white, and then other cooler stars with temperatures of 3,500 Kelvin appear red. Now our sun, um, that's the one that you see kind of highlighted in the middle and on, under main sequence. Um, it has a surface temperature of 57,000 Kelvin. And they appear usually whitish or yellow. Now 90% um, of stars uh, in this so-called main sequence are in this so-called main sequence. The evolution and property of a star are uniquely determined by the star's mass and its chemical composition. The more massive stars burn hotter and therefore they are brighter. These more massive stars are found at, at the upper left of the main sequence and then the less massive stars are at the lower right. And by burning hotter, the more massive stars also burn faster the stellar lifetimes vary over a vast range. The less, um, these are from less than a half a million years for the most massive stars, up to 300 billion years for the least massive. And our sun's expected life is 10 billion years. And of that, it's already uh, lived about 4.5 billion years. So you can go to the second picture, Ari. All right, um, there, are the, there are about 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and some of these stars are just being born. Others are in the main sequence, and yet others still uh, left the main sequence and appear as giants, dwarfs, supernovas, uh, pulsars, and even black holes. And there are billions of galaxies in the observable universe. You can go to the next picture. Okay. All right, so to wrap up this, uh, what I'm just going to discuss is uh, Astronomy 101. I want to make it clear that stars are continually evolving, potentially becoming suns all the way up to black holes. 
and the process on how this happens is through its own gravitational self-attraction, the gas cloud, which is most, mostly hydrogen, collapses to the point where its central temperature has risen sufficiently to allow the hydrogen nuclei to fuse together to form helium. Now this, this uh, nuclear fusion reaction creates great internal heat and pressure and it causes the star to stop contracting. The star then joins the main sequence. Now, while hydrogen and helium were created during the Big Bang, all other heavier elements, including those to f that formed the planets and all living organisms, were created later in the nuclear furnaces of stars. These heavy elements are ejected from the stars through supernova explosions and other mechanisms and they enrich the interstellar gas with these heavy elements. Second generational stars like our sun and their planets formed from the enriched interstellar gas. So what's important to understand is that Earth and the human and our human physiology are all fashioned from material cooked in stars. We are basically made of stardust. So now to go back to how I started the conversation, what happens on the macrocosm level, also happens on the microcosm. You can Good go time. to the next picture. Okay. Sorry, it's blurry. Sorry, it's blurry. <laughs> All right. Um, so now that we have a better understanding, that we can better understand this shift that we're currently in and why um, we're having such drastic effects on us. So I'll start by discussing the astronomy of the events that happened on 2012 that all the ancient civilizations predicted. Overall, it was like a galactic alignment, per se. Um, as the sun and other stars revolve around one another and move in their orbits, they come into various alignments with each other. And on December 21st, 2012, there were two different alignments in our Milky Way galaxy. One was that our sun and the entire solar system came in direct alignment with the galactic equator. And two, that this picture shows the galactic center or what shows as the great central sun, um, the greater central sun or Sirius and the central sun, which is Alcyon, these three suns, so they formed an equilateral triangle in space. And both of these events happened at the same time on December 21st, 2012. Now, our earth receives energies both physical and subtle, um, from the suns as well as other stars. To receive the maximum amount of energy, it has to come in proper alignment with these celestial bodies. An alignment occurring at the level of the galactic center will have an effect which is many, many times higher in magnitude. And when our Earth, along with the solar system, align with the galactic equator, it came into a direct focus of a huge amount of subtle energies which emerged from galactic center. Um, the triangular uh, formation of Alcyon, Sirius, and the galactic center of 2012 brought on massive amounts of spiritual energies from these stars to the earth and was the reason for most of us beginning to wake up at that time. Um, you can go to the next picture. Oops. So our sun takes nearly 26,000 years to complete its orbit around Alcyon. And this cycle was completed in 2012. And Alcyon takes about uh, a few million years uh, to revolve around Sirius, which also completed its orbit in 2012. At the physical level, this brought about huge changes, like the interchanging of the magnetic poles of the sun, which in turn triggered similar changes on Earth. And these massive changes had a huge bearing on humanity and all life that our Earth inhabits. The current events that are occurring now are releasing huge amounts of energy, both physical and spiritual, which are having massive effects on our society. You can imagine like a pillar of brilliant white light emanating from the cosmic central sun and then being distributed through central suns, just like Sirius, of all the galaxies in the universe. And remember that there are billions of different galaxies in our observable universe. Now visualize that entering in through Alcyon, emanating through our solar system, going through all beings of light within our solar system 
and then through all beings on planet earth, also through our own bodies and to the center of the earth. Now, this is what's currently happening and it's purifying our planet's uh, level of consciousness along with our own. This is why the changes we are experiencing are so drastic. You can go to the next picture. Which Yuga are we in now? We, as you can see, the Para Yuga. Um, this is a picture of actually our sun going around uh, Alcyon. And right now, if you look at the bottom of that picture, it's 2082. Yeah. Um, so we're in the Para Yuga on this side. And in 2082, in about 60 years, we'll be going into Threta Yuga. Okay. You can see that? We're on this side. Oh. Correct. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yes, that was correct. Okay, and then okay. we're going this way. Yes. Okay. Back up to Sat Yuga. So Kali Yuga, because you told me about this before, Kali Yuga was when all of the enlightened beings like Buddha lived, right? No. So Kali Yuga, the further you away from the sun, the central sun, the more uh, you can say dumbed down that we get. We're not, um, we're not uh, able to feel the electrical current that the sun gives out, the life, the prana, the life force. So it says right here, uh, this was when Krishna era was at the oh. beginning of the one Kali Yuga, Krishna's era. And then um, I believe it was at the end of Kali Yuga on the other side was uh, when Jesus came around. Got it. Um, and then this is, say that again. That's, this is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm trying to, like, if, if once I was able to understand this on this cosmic level, it really makes sense on everything that we're going through. So I wanted to present this to, to people to kind of, if we can understand this as a whole, then we don't have to be so afraid of what's going on. It's just a purification process, and this continues to happen, you know, over and over, lifetime after lifetime. So um, the last picture... Uh, so our solar system sun, Syria, uh, will soon have not a supernova, but a micronova, uh, where its electromagnetic field will extend and expand into Earth's magnetic field. This will call, cause major changes energetically with Earth and every being because we all have magnetic, magnetic fields around us. Um, this event is being known as a solar flash, and it's acting as like a huge EMP. No one knows the exact date of when this actually will take place. We are currently, though, in a solar minimum. This is when the activity of the sun goes fairly dormant. There is no sunspots and there are very few solar flares. Now, at the end of this 9 to 11 year period, the sun will roar back into an active state and come out of solar minimum into solar maximum. Now, I expect that when this happens is when this micronova will occur, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, we just recently started this solar minimum cycle. So that would put this event around 2029 to 2033. Um, what I do know is that it's well overdue and it has been overdue for some time. Now, Everything that I just explained, this is the dimensional shift that I'm speaking of um, that is completely going to change our perspective. Um, when the solar flash occurs, higher vibrating individuals will ascend to a higher density. Uh, to the rest of society who is still in low vibration when this event occurs, it will look as though these higher vibrating beings died. Um, but they actu in actuality, they have ascended to higher realms. Now, for a long time, uh, I was worried about ascending and leaving my family behind, but it has brought to my awareness that we will be able to come back in an ascended form to help our family and friends out um, that I've not yet ascended to give them inspiration and hope to do the same thing. Uh, Gaia is now completely awakened and Gaia all of her inhabitants. Another name for Earth. Gaia, another name for Earth. Um, <clears throat> And since she has awakened, all of her inhabitants will begin this accelerated ascension process that we're all going through. Um, the outdated and corrupt ways of running government, financial, political, educational, religious, and other systems 
um, they must break down and evolve to a level of purity. So what we're seeing today is a purification process. It's not for me to get into specifics of what's happening on a microcosmic level. I just want everyone to be aware, uh, not of what the media is throwing our, in our faces, but of what they are hiding in plain sight. Um, not to get into speculation, but all these CEOs aren't just stepping down over the past two months for no reason. Uh, there are countless indictments coming to the most powerful people in the world that will begin this purification process microcosmically. Um, so now that I've stated all the scientific knowledge that I have, I'll refrain from speculation and anybody who wants to kind of tune in can tune in now.